In today's video tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate a cake mug, which will feature two little donuts. This will be a really sweet design for Valentine's Day or anniversaries. Okay, so what I have here is some gum paste. It's just rolled out into a snake shape. And this is what we're gonna use for our handle. If you don't have gum paste, you can use fondant with Tylose powder kneaded into it. Uh, but I do think you need one or the other. Straight fondant, I think, would be a little too soft. So I'm just gonna measure out about six inches of length. And you can adjust to what you like, but um, I think this will be a good size handle for us. And even though it's kind of a pain, it's a good idea to do two handles just in case one of them were to break. Uh, but our lollipop sticks will be our anchors. We probably don't need this much length. And I'm just gonna push these in. You could also dip the end in a little uh, piping gel or Tylose glue if you want to make sure that it's going to stay put, but I'm pushing it far enough in that I don't think we need to worry about it, it coming loose. Okay. So I'm just pushing it in maybe about a half inch or so until it seems secure. And then you can just move this to some parchment paper, a parchment lined cookie sheet or whatever you like and that's all there is to it. Also think about what side you want the handle to be on for the mug because the top is going to be a little more rounded than the bottom side once it's finished drying and so if that matters to you just think in advance about where what side of the mug you want your handle to be on. But that's all there is to it for the mug. Uh, I would just let it dry at least for 24 hours to be on the safe side, but if you're in a really humid area, it might take longer than that. So what I have here is a three layer cake. I've already filled it. As you can see, I've wrapped it with plastic wrap and I also have a book on top. This is what I do to settle the cake. Um, it's good to do this process so that you can avoid any kind of funny bulges later on because all cakes are gonna settle a little bit. So we like to go ahead and get that out of the way before we frost the cake. Um, so this has been settling for a few hours. I can now take the book off. You can, oops, you can give the cake a good little press down a few times also to just make sure that it has settled all it's going to settle. I'm gonna unwrap it. And now we will frost the cake as usual. If you have any little gaps in between your cake layers, you wanna fill those with frosting uh, before going in and frosting the whole thing. And what I like to do is just a quick crumb coat, then we will freeze it to firm it up and go back in with our second coat. So we'll meet back in just a few minutes once we're a little bit further along. Okay, so I have just taken my cake out of the freezer. It was in there for about 15 minutes to firm up our first coat of frosting. I've just added the second coat of frosting. And now I'm gonna go in with a hot bench scraper. And doing it this way will smooth, the, the heat will smooth out the buttercream and will give us just a nicer finish. So I'm just making sure to hold my bench scraper so that it hits the pedestal or the turntable. And also just holding it at a 90 degree angle against the cake and we'll just swirl it around a time or two. This step also often will show you where you need to build the frosting out just a little bit more. If you see that the bench scraper didn't quite make contact with the cake all the way down, then you'll know that maybe in those places you need to build out the frosting just a little bit more. But I think we're in, in good shape. Uh, you can also see where I have built up the frosting around the top edge of the cake. And that's just something that I always do. And then I go back in with my offset spatula and just kind of sweep that excess frosting towards the center. So I'll do that now. And I'm not worried about crumbs being in the frosting at this point because we're on our second coat and everything is under control. So I'm just 
scraping it back into the bowl with the rest of the frosting. Okay, I do have a place here and there that I kind of want to fine tune. And so I'm going to place this back in the freezer for another 10 minutes and I'll just come back in with my hot spatula or bench scraper and finish it. But okay, so now I have my chilled cake. It was in the freezer for about 20 minutes. And so the buttercream is firm and I have a large circle cutter, but if you don't have a cutter this large, you could also just make a template from cardstock. Uh, but I'm using this as a guide because I'm gonna be removing a little bit of the center of our mug so that it gives it a little bit of dimension. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut about a half inch or so down all the way around as we spin it. And then we're gonna remove this middle section. So I think it's a little bit easier to deal with it in sections. So I'm just gonna cut it into fourths. It's okay if it's messy once we remove this because it's gonna be all covered up with frosting. Okay, I'm just gonna go in at a side angle and just cut beneath and just remove it. Okay, so now as you see, we have some exposed cake on the edge that I want to cover up with white. Um, so it's just the inner part of our mug. So I just have some white buttercream in a disposable piping bag with the tip snipped away. I'm just gonna pipe along the inside edge. Okay. And then I'm just gonna take my small spatula and gently smooth that. Okay, and you can just scrape away the excess into a, a cup. Okay, now I am gonna add the brown, which is our latte. And this is, again, a disposable piping bag with a tip snipped away. And I'm just gonna do just enough frosting to cover up our exposed cake. But I don't wanna fill up our mug too, too much. Okay. Then you can go with a spatula or even a spoon might be a little bit easier just because of the angle. And get it as smooth as you can but we will be moving this to the freezer in a second, and that's when we can really get it smooth. Okay, now I'm just kind of smoothing over my frosting. It's firm right now and it's cold. It just came out of the freezer, and this is just some very hot water that I heated my spatula with, and that way we can just more easily glide over any little imperfections that we have. Okay, I just put some dots of buttercream on top of our latte. I'm just gonna kind of smooth that around and we'll see if we can get sort of a, more of a latte look. I'll put a little bit more. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that I am using the hot knife method for smoothing, but if you'd rather, you could use the Viva paper towel method if you're working with a crusting buttercream. So just go with what you like. Okay, so now I have my chilled tear and it's ready to go. I have a sharp knife and I need to move the tear to the pedestal. So I have a little buttercream on my pedestal and I'm just gonna slide the knife underneath the cake board and just rotate it. And because the cake is chilled and firm, it makes the process much easier. Okay, so I'm just gonna slide it off of the pedestal. Oops. Okay. Let me smooth that over here. And I have some kind of 
ragged edges that I should be able to just smooth. I should be able to smooth these because it's chilled with my spatula. And if you need to patch anything when the cake is still chilled, you can just take a little fresh buttercream and pipe it in the places that you need to, or even just a small bead border, I think would be fine for the base of the cake if you felt like you needed a border. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to show you, this is the little message for our mug, the I love you a latte. And I just use letters from a set that we have from Wilton that look like this, and I can leave a link to that. But now I'm gonna just put them on the cake. It's best to do this step if your buttercream is chilled so that you can pick up the letters and slide them around if you have to. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep placing these letters and we'll meet right back. Okay, so you can see I've placed my letters. I think it looks cute. And so now I'm gonna place my handle. I wanted to get the wording on there first before doing the handle. Okay, so I'm just sliding this in. My anchors are probably a little longer than they need to be. Okay, so now we have a mug. Okay, so now I'm just adding some heart sprinkles. I'm just using the red ones. And this, these are just little Valentine's Day sprinkles that we've had for a while. These are Wilton. Um, but anyway, you could use polka dots or whatever you want to, to do to decorate your mug, but we're just keeping it really simple. And I can just press it on because it's still a little bit um, the, well, for one thing, the frosting is softening a little bit, but it still has a, a little bit of condensation also. But if you needed a glue, you could just put a dot of buttercream on the back. Okay, so I'm just going to work my way all the way around with the sprinkles, and we'll meet back in just a few minutes. Okay, so now we are decorating our boy and girl donuts. So I have one glazed donut here, and you can see I've already put on the eyes. I'm um, starting to do the eyelashes. But for the eyes, you could either start out with a small ball of white gum paste or fondant and then just flatten it into the circle. But if you want it to be precise, just roll out your fondant and then just take a medium-sized round tip. This is a tip 12 and just treat that as a cutter. Okay, let's see. And you can always, if they're not quite as large as you want, you can flatten them slightly. And you might want to just let them set up for a few minutes so that they're easier to write on. Um, so we'll just let these set up for a second. This, these will be for our boy. Um, but I'm just using a food writer pen, and this is actually for candy decorating. They write really easily on candy melts, but I also found it to be a little bit easier for the to write on this glaze. So that's why I'm using this. Um, so I'm just going to draw her eyelashes on just as a cute little extra detail. And then for her mouth, Oops. And just take some red fondant. Always start with a ball. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, I'm just making a small little snake, and then I'm gonna pinch it on both sides to create her little mouth. And just give it a line down the middle. And then I'm gonna use a toothpick to do the top. Okay, so once it's shaped like you like, you can just glue it on there either with a little Tylos glue, buttercream should work fine too, or this is piping gel. For, for monster donuts, a lot of times people actually use the whole of the donut for the mouth, and I think that would be kind of funny too, but we're gonna be cutting our donut down, so not much of the whole is actually gonna show. Plus I think the, these little lips are funny. Okay, so you can see I'm starting to put everything together now, so I wanted to tell you, I've, you can see that I've trimmed the donuts down, and I really just pressed it right into the frosting, and they stay, because they're thick enough, that they just kind of stay put. And um, I did use just a little bit of pink uh, petal dust and I brushed on just a little blush on the girl. Um, totally optional, I just a lot of times will put on blush um, just for a cute little detail. And then his mouth of course is just a small little skinny snake of red fondant and you can just glue all of that on with piping gel or if you don't have piping gel use buttercream. Okay, so here's just an extra donut that we had, so I, I thought that was cute to put that there. Uh, I wanted to give her a bow, so for the bow, I'm gonna use pink fondant. I'm just brushing on a little piping gel. And here's one loop, which is basically, you start out with a little round ball, flatten it, and then just pinch it on one side, and then we'll just tap it in on the other side. So it's basically a triangle which is a little indention on the side. Same thing for the other side. You could also use little heart shapes if you want to for, the, for this part. And then just a little, small little ball of pink fondant for the little center of the bow. Okay, I also thought it would be cute to have a little heart attached to floral wire. This is gonna go between them. And so this is just a red fondant heart. It has Tylos kneaded into it. Um, just allow an hour or two for it to dry. And then what you'll do is you'll just flip it over. You can go ahead even while um, it's still a little bit soft. You can press the floral wire just gently into the back and then attach it with a little piping gel or Tylos glue, and then press on either a little strip of red fondant or gum paste, or in this case, I had an extra little heart that was still a little bit soft. I just pressed it on to secure the wire to the back side. And then once everything is dry, you could either um, use it just as it is, but I wanted to coil my wire. So I'm gonna trim off some of this length. And then you can coil it around a brush or a pin. And you'll just start at the top and just coil it around. You could even do this step in advance if you want to before attaching the heart. Okay, so I think that's cute. And then we just need to run it through a straw. The straw will help keep it secure, but it also, keep keeps the wire from making any contact with the cake uh, because technically it's not really food safe. So I'm just gonna thread this through and because there's a little kink in the wire, it should stay put. You could put an, another little kink if you want to. So I'm using a little cocktail straw, but if you don't have that, you can use a drinking straw. And like I said, just put a little kink in the wire and it. Um, doesn't wiggle around too much. So I need to trim my straw just a little bit so that it won't show. And then I'm just gonna push this in between them and behind them. Like that. Okay, so our cake is finished. I love how this turned out. I think it's so sweet and 
perfect for Valentine's Day or anniversary. So I hope you'll give it a try. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.